One of the most important things I have understood in the past year, past few years, but mostly in the past year, is that one of the greatest problems of humankind is that we don't understand and we don't accept the purpose of suffering and most of us try to escape it. It's mostly unconscious, of course, but we have all these escapist uh, tendencies. Of course, in the world there are so many uh, <laughs> opportunities for escaping suffering and escaping our issues and escaping uh, the negativity. There is all this toxic positivity movement and uh, spiritual bypassing. You can call it many names, of course. Even if it's spiritual or not spiritual, basically it's about only focusing on the positive or only trying to or wanting to do good things and always wanting to be happy and uh, ignoring the negative, ignoring the problems, the issues, the dark things, the negative things. All of our problems, issues, adversities, traumas, whatever word you want to use, all of these contain superpowers. We just need to learn how to transmute them and this is something that we are in the mainstream culture not uh, shown and uh, nobody teaches us how to do it and uh, its importance. It doesn't really matter what we call it or which tradition we go into or which method we really use. I believe the most important thing is that we accept that life has shadow parts to it and that the suffering in our lives has meaning. It's not just there to make us feel bad and uh, make us want to escape and, uh, and avoid it. Because if, if we really, if we understand and learn how we can transmute it, it has so much power. And this is what I have been discovering, um, yeah, mostly in the past year. It's been really intense and I, wow, I transmuted so much, uh, kind of like shifted the, the negative parts into, into the positive. But for this, of course, I guess it's the first step that you need to take that is a courageous step. But after that, you feel, you see, you experience for yourself that it's not such a big deal, really. We can just first, yeah, start to look inside and, and um, accept, acknowledge that we have those dark parts. And even if we have repressed them or avoided them for so long, we can just start by taking small steps and <laughs> the rewards will be enormous. And maybe for the small steps, the rewards will be small first, but as we go deeper and deeper, we go into this process, uh, the rewards will be enormous. <laughs> so yeah, I would say it this way. I learned that trauma or wounds or issues, problems, adversity, all of that is a doorway to self-exploration. And when we go in that door, <laughs> Or, or we, we start going um, in that way or that path. There are like so many treasures hidden inside of us that are just there waiting for us to, to transform them into, into the highest uh, possible states, the highest possible forms. I could uh, transform and transmute a lot, a lot, a lot of fears some fears were smaller and some fears were, were more important, but I could go down, deep down, and, and um, yes, it needed a lot of courage and it needed a lot of time and patience, that's true as well. But uh, if we think about it, all that uh, is really <laughs> good in life and really important in life needs time and patience. So I could go in depth and maybe have a 
few very difficult days but I just started um, acknowledging and accepting like okay I have this fear inside me I never really wanted to even acknowledge it or I didn't want to think about it I was just like oh, please stay down there and I don't want to look there and uh, no you don't even exist la 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 I'm not listening I'm um, I don't know I'm going to travel to Thailand and have some fun and have coconut waters blah 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 or I'm gonna dance tonight or I'm gonna watch Netflix or I'm gonna whatever um, I think you know what I mean. <sighs> yeah, it, it took courage to go down and stay with the pain, stay with the suffering, stay with the, this whole confusion and this whole state of I have no idea what is happening, uh, it just hurts, but I am not trying to escape anymore. And I, I what they say, I sat with it, um, or I was lying in bed <laughs> very often with it and or I was crying or I was just suffering basically but it only lasted a day or two or three and after that the reward was really such happiness and such lightness and such I can't really put it into words because it was just like I don't know elevating myself really high without any kind of uh, mind altering uh, substances or, or any kind of dopamine inducing activities or anything external because it all came from the inside and it was not a, cu a quick fix <laughs> at any moment. Uh, it was all just me, my fears and my courage and they were like confronted well, it was not even like a fight, it was just like letting it be, l l accepting that this is me as well. And it's not like my true essence as a soul, but this is my human uh, body, my human vehicle, and this human uh, vehicle carries <laughs> um, within itself some encoded things, some things from past or parallel or however you want to say it, other lifetimes, some things with my lineage, so from past generations um, of my family, both bloodlines, and some things are just uh, like the collective karma, so there are many facets, many aspects, many layers. My essence as a soul is not this but I am having a human experience and <laughs> this is included in the human experience even if I'm talking about the spiritual part uh, which is about the soul and uh, and being pure light and being love and uh, and all that yes that is true but as we are here in this uh, <laughs> reality yeah, it's a dualistic reality and there is polarity and uh, there is just all the things that are happening in the third dimension, we cannot escape it either, we cannot deny it, we have to deal with it. When I say uh, spiritual bypassing, that means that we, we want to just get to the higher frequencies and to the highest possible states of consciousness without dealing with the with the lower frequency stuff and maybe we are talking about escaping the matrix and all that but really our experience is all shaped by us also here on the material plane in the 3d and also in the higher dimensions we kind of need to accept it all because otherwise we are like ignoring avoiding parts of the whole story so what I have learned personally that it's really important to take ownership of all our issues and the whole reality or with all the ups and downs and all the dark parts also because there is <laughs> incentive it's not about like uh, I, I have to suffer just for the sake of suffering 
if I go into the dark part, I am going in there in order to clean it out and then get to the higher states. Because if I get to the higher states without going down there, so bypassing, then I'm not going to stay there for long and uh, it's not going to be my true reality. It's just going to be a phase and I'm going to kind of have to come down from from the high where I got and that's called a high. Yeah, I get high. And if I actually want to stay high, <laughs> then I have to uh, put in the work. So it's simply about realizing that we can face adversity and difficulties in an open way and that it all has a meaning and a purpose. Transmuting all of that will take us higher and higher uh, to higher and higher states of consciousness, I mean, uh, and eventually to enlightenment. As I mentioned in previous videos, I, uh, I had a relatively easy life until I was 30. I faced a lot of challenges and I um, had a lot of changes in my life during that period, but somehow it all went easily and I had a lot of positive experiences and my self-confidence was growing and my courage was growing all the time because I faced the challenges, I faced maybe smaller fears on a regular basis and I could always overcome everything or mostly everything in positive ways. And now I believe that this was a necessary part of my life in order to have this, this very strong base and this inner knowing that I can overcome challenges and I can do it no matter what. So when, when I turned 30 and life started to bring bigger and bigger challenges, that base was very important. Of course, everything is connected and everything happens for a reason. I believe that. So um, this was the reason why, why my, my childhood, my teenage years and my young um, adulthood were all um, relatively easy. Uh, so, so that uh, I could <laughs> have this kind of uh, engine or I don't know, and myself that will bring me forward into the more difficult parts <laughs> and also i i am able to to take um these things in a fun way because i believe and i have always believed that playfulness is very important and this is just also such an innate thing that even in like amidst the greatest adversities, I can laugh at the situation and laugh at myself. Maybe one moment I cry and the next moment I laugh, but uh, I really, I am really grateful for, for this skill and, uh, and this character trait that, that I am a person who can make fun of herself and of any difficulty and, uh, and I believe that helps enormously. It all, like the whole package helps me um, to see it all like this is all happening for my growth. I believe this is very important for all of us to somehow acquire, learn and start practicing all this. This knowledge, this feeling, this kind of experience in our life that it's all happening for us. It's all contributing to our growth. And as I mentioned before, that all adversity, all issues, all difficulties have superpowers uh, <laughs> hidden. They all contain superpowers. We simply need to take the first steps in transforming, transmuting the negative things and then see for ourselves that this is the way it works. What I find really useful, for example, when, when uh, mm, we face some kind of challenge or adversity or difficulty, 
to start with, it's, uh, it's simply uh, a few questions like uh, what is this difficulty showing me about myself, about the situation, about life? How can I best accept this situation? How can I best accept myself? How can I be softer, more understanding and more compassionate with myself? through this adversity, how can I soften more? How can I open my heart more even though life is challenging me or because life is challenging me? And what is in the way of me loving myself more? And also because we are not used to letting ourselves feel our negative feelings, it can be helpful to start with also with just a few easy questions whenever a negative feeling comes up. For me personally, it's very important to go out of my head. Whenever I really start looping on something or start to kind of problem solve, um, especially when it's a situation that hasn't even happened yet, I'm just starting to worry about something in the future. And when I realize that my mind is uh, going crazy and looping about something, it's always very useful to say like, okay, now I, I will stop this and I will come into my body and, and just exit my head because that is not getting me anywhere. It's just making me feel frustrated and tense. So I come down <laughs> to the body and I, I just feel the negative feeling. I just let my body feel it and embrace it kind of and that way it would just pass much faster than if I stay in my head all the time then it will just create more and more turmoil and more and more turbulence and chaos so I come down to the body I also it calms my my thoughts down it calms my head down maybe I can meditate or maybe I can do some stretching or some yoga or some uh, qigong or tai chi or, or some slow and easy movement where, where I'm feeling my body. And then there are some questions I can ask myself that are also really useful. Like, what am I really feeling? What is this feeling showing me? So what am I desiring, yearning for? What am I wanting? What, what do I need? Is it safety? Is it love? Is it care? Is it um, attention? And what am I really experiencing in my core or in my heart versus what am I letting myself really feel? So what, what am I repressing? Am I repressing anything? And if I am able to really go into this and honestly ask myself these questions, things will start coming up. I will receive answers. I will be able to listen to myself. And then uh, you can call it inner child work or you can call it whatever. Um, the point is that I can give myself love and care affection compassion attention i can do it all with myself and i don't need to expect it from the outside i don't need to wait for it i don't need to look for it in somewhere else of course it's really nice if i if i have another person who can uh, hold me and who can uh, help me and who can care for me and show love and all that but if we are used to always getting it from the outside, we will have this expectation that, okay, this other person, um, may it be my partner, my child, my parent, um, my best friend, whoever, they are there in order to give me this love, care, etc., etc. I believe, uh, and this is what I learned in the past year, that I spent mostly alone uh, and I'm really really grateful for that because of course it was hard <laughs> it was really hard sometimes uh, <laughs> incredibly hard but i learned that yes i can give all these things to myself and i i am 
super happy. I, 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 this is what we are here to learn, that it all starts <laughs> inside of us and in the, we can build this whole strength and this whole base for ourselves and then if I am able to do it within me I don't need to look for it outside. Of course it's really nice if I can have it from the outside but that's an extra. Like It's like uh, what I mentioned in a previous video that if I travel to Bali or if I go rock climbing or scuba diving of course these are maybe extreme examples, but all these are extras. If I have a best friend who can hug me, that's an extra. That's really beautiful, of course, but that's an extra. And if I don't have that, because that's not a basic, if I have the basics, which is all in me, in my inner peace, my harmony, my strength, and me being able to deal with my wounds, and being able to transform all these negative things that, that we are most of our lives trying to run away from, if I am able to not get rid of them, I transform them and I transform them to something beautiful and valuable, if I am able to do that, then I, I, I really, in any, any situation in my life, in any adversity, in any challenge, I will be able to stay calm, I will be able to stay strong, I will be able to stay happy. Maybe it will be difficult, maybe I will suffer, but still I will not feel like it's the end of the world, I will not feel like I need this, I need that, I'm not getting this, I'm a victim. It's basically about being a victim. So when we are able to look inside and get all the hidden treasures out and transform them, we will no longer be victims. This is the point. <laughs> I think I'm gonna stop at this point. Um, because this is all so beautiful and we all have the answer within, really. There is no method, no, no, no person, no guru, no, no nothing that we need because it's all in here. And of course, I could also mention all the material things uh, that, that we don't need. We can have them and it's beautiful. I can have a car, I can have a home, I can travel a lot, I can do all those things, but they are just extra. They are all extra. If I have the basics and I'm happy with the basics and I'm grateful for all that, that's really the most important thing. And this is what I discovered. So thank you for listening to me.